Good morning. It's early April. Just received notification a couple of days ago about a new set of notes that are available direct. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to walk you guys through the process of evaluating notes. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to go ahead and log in to the Notes Direct site. At, so I'm going to go ahead and look for new assets. And uh, I believe there's about... When I checked, it looks like, it looks like they have about 75 or so assets here. Um, so let's see, I'm going to change this to 50 so that all 50 display on one page. And then I'm just going to, um, to select uh, check all here. And uh, you notice that it adds a little check mark next to each of these notes here on the left of include and trade CSV. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a trade CSV file. Okay, so the trade CSV file is here on the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up Notes Unlimited. Go ahead, sign in as myself here, and uh, I can simply just drag this onto the to the portal here, and it'll ask me to whether I want to import these set of notes into a pool and. Normally what I do is for every source of notes that I evaluate, I put it I put it into a pool. So in this case, I'm going to put it in a pool called notes direct. And I'm just going to put April 11, 2020. Okay. So go ahead and click on create. I can put a little description here. I uh, will just say April tape from from notes direct. Okay. Now this we're not uh, we don't have a pool price. In some cases, a there is notes that you'll get with a overall pool price for the entire pool. But in this case, there's no pool, so we'll a pool price. So we'll just go ahead and leave that blank. We'll click on save. And make sure that notes direct is listed here. Sure enough, it's here with a little check mark. So I just go ahead and click on import to pool. Okay. So this should take a little bit of time here. It's going out and pulling those notes off of the CSV file and doing some validation and calculations and validating calculations and, and, and things of that nature. Okay. So it looks like it's about to load here give it a few seconds and you see that uh, it went ahead and added those and the reason the way I know that it's added it is that here I am I have notes direct 411 2020 so one of the first things that I do is is I go ahead and uh, since I have a number of tapes that I'm, I'm reviewing I I want to filter the dashboard to that to those notes okay so all I have here on this page are notes from the pool name notes direct 411 2020 okay now the first thing that i do on on any set of notes that i review is that i go ahead and do an update right i update whatever information we have on the internet for these notes such as market value crime score school score and things of that nature so I'll go ahead and select the checkbox here up on the upper left, and that basically selects all the notes here on this page. I'm going to change this view to 20 uh, to 50 because that's the number of notes that are associated to the notes direct pool. So we have now 50 or some on notes here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select this, and then I'm going to ahead and do a sync update. Now, sync update goes out to the internet and does a lot of polling and pooling of information for these properties that are associated to these notes. Okay, and uh, so take here another few minutes here, but uh, yeah, basically, rather than you going to these these property addresses individually to Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, eAppraisals, or whatever the case may be, the portal goes out and, and does that for you and pulls that information into the portal. So we'll give it a few minutes here. Should be, should be wrapping up here shortly. 
pulling about 50 some odd notes. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And uh, so the other thing that I look at is, I'm, I guess I'm a bit of a yield junkie. So I kind of sort it by a yield. Okay, so I have all the higher, higher elite yields up on the top here. Okay, so the next thing that I do is I kind of skim the page for notes that obviously have my the kind of yield that I'm kind of looking for. I generally gravitate to, to notes that have a higher monthly payment. So like 325 anything over $300 is, is reasonable. So let's see. So this note here is is not quite where where I would like it from a from a monthly payment perspective, but the school score is solid, the the yield solid, the loan to value is solid, investment to value is solid. So I'm going to make a note to myself to follow up on this one. So I'm going to lay, follow up, save Okay, so I mark that note as something that I'd like to follow up on. Okay, so and I know that by by the fact that I've added the the, the label here to follow up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead continue kind of skimming down the page here, and my focus right now is not so much on these items here on the left, but a, a little bit more on on these items uh, to the right, specifically crime and and school score. So. This one in particular in Fairborn, Ohio, is something that is of interest uh, just because it's got a, a solid school score and a solid crime score. So I'll, I'll go mark that as, as something I want to follow up on. Okay, so this is kind of my kind of first pass at this. Okay, a similar, alert to, similar to the one here just below in, in Bicknell, Indiana. That's also... It's matching up a lot of the things that I'd like to see. Over $300, yield of 11.9%. We have like an, a loan to value, investment to values are actually quite nice for a performing note. And uh, the school score and the crime crime score. So this this looks like a pretty solid note, at least on at least at a, at a high level. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Okay, and I'm just kind of continuing my way down through this list here. We'll we'll let's see if we can find a couple more here. So we just finished up on this one in Fairborn, or no, Bicknell. Let's see, we got a solid, solid crime score on this one here. We don't have a, a, um, a school score just yet, but I'm going to mark that one as something I want to follow up on. So follow up, save that. Okay, and we'll just continue. We'll maybe find a couple more here. Let's see. I was at Wapakoneta, Ohio. Don't say that too fast. So continue going down here. So this one in Merrillville, Indiana doesn't look too bad. School scores are not exactly where I would like them to be, but it's not a, not a deal breaker. And then I think I saw one in here in Columbus, Ohio as well, which I think is worth investigating. Was it Columbus? Okay, let's see. I, I saw something in Columbus here. Oh, there it is. Columbus, Ohio. Let's see. Go up the page here a little bit. Yeah, Columbus, Ohio. Really nice crime score. Um the school score I'm not really keen on this it seems on a little bit on the low side so I'm actually gonna kind of continue my continue down the, the page here so let's see go down okay this one in church Charleston uh, South Carolina seems pretty solid so we'll go ahead and select that label as follow up okay so now I've identified about five notes here that I, I'd like to take a look at 
So I can then filter on label. So now I have all the notes that I've marked as so the first my first layer was the pool, right? We moved it into a pool and then I filtered the the dashboard based on pool. And then I went through and identified the notes that are of particular interest by adding the label follow up, okay? Or any label you'd like. Again, I use the word follow up, but you're more than welcome to create a label of your own. And, and now I I'll kind of narrow this down to a handful of notes that are of, of particular interest to me, okay? And as I mentioned to you before, I'm kind of interested in notes that are hovering around that $300 a month mailbox check that, that I would get. Again, this is performing notes, okay? And then and then my secondary look is I want these, these numbers here to be uh, pretty solid. Loan to values are all, in these cases, below... 50% of value, right, which is solid. Investment to value is also solid, right? All all of these are below 50%. So quite a bit of equity is, is the borrower has quite a bit of equity in, in, these, in these properties. So chances are that the borrower is going to continue to pay on, on these notes, okay? So, so let's see. So the next layer that I look at, and this is something I kind of look at individually in, on a per note basis, the other thing that I like to do, look at is property evaluation, okay? Now, this particular note, the market value is a little bit on the lower lower side. The 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 year it was built is also on the low on the lower end side. Um happy happy with the rent that this would generate market values for properties in this area a little bit on the low side. So let's see. Let's see, take a look at uh, property demographics uh, per capita income seems to be on the on the decline. Uh, monthly household income has been on the decline until recently. Employment seems to be up and down. So just on those, just actually on these two things here, I'm actually going to pass on this, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and deselect this and say this is not a note that I'm looking to pursue. So we're going to go back to the dashboard. Should eliminate that one note. Now I'm going to look at the one here in Fairborn, Ohio. Okay, let's see. And I'll just go through the same kinds of things. I'll go to the property tab. This one, so it got got a little bit more curb appeal here. Properties built in 1940, which is reasonable. Uh, I don't have any market comparables, and I don't have a market value, so that's a little bit disconcerting. But this might be something that I might want to investigate uh, a little bit more on the market value, what the market value is for this particular property. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, demographics here. So a nice steady rise in per, per capita income, nice steady rise of employment, nice steady rise of population. So this looks pretty solid. So in the, for this particular property, I would like to have an action of I would say investigate market value, okay? Because that's really kind of the only thing that's kind of holding me up on this one. We'll go ahead and save that. And market value, investigate market value is now added here. So let me see. There was one other item that I wanted to double confirm. Okay, so market rent is is. Uh, <clears throat> it's seven hundred dollars, right? and I got a couple of sources of that now from Rentometer and Zillow. Okay, uh, one bedroom, yeah, it's about six thirty-eight according to Rentometer, and about seven hundred dollars according to Zillow. So, from a kind of income perspective, the property is worth about seventy thousand dollars, according to my my quick math here. One percent, basically one percent of the market value. In, in this case, $700. So that makes it a $70,000 in, in sort of worth in, in based on the income that it generates. Okay. So that's just kind of some quick math that I'm doing here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that as something that I want to investigate further. So we'll go back to the dashboard. I'll just kind of continue my, down the page here. So we have, let's see, we have this one on Bicknell. I, I like the three, over $300 over $300 a monthly payment. So let's go ahead and open up here and go to the property tab Let's take a quick peek and just kind of thumb through the property the property a little bit on the older side you know, built in 1912 mm, it's 
and the market value is is a tad on the low side for me. I mean, Realtor.com has come up with a fifty-eight thousand dollar value. Although this picture here doesn't look too bad, so I don't know if this is a before or after picture, but this photo here and this paint is painted looks a little bit better. But for for the same reasons that I passed on the earlier one. House is built in 1912. Market value is $26,000. If I do any work on this property, am I really going to get my money back? If I if I replace a bathroom or a kitchen, I'm going to be I'm going to be in it for more than what I can sell it for, right? So, and taking a look at all the market comparables that I'm seeing, this property at best we're looking at $50,000 at best, okay? based on the market comparables. And it seems like this area has a lot of older homes, right? So probably not something that I want to pursue as a, as a performing note. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove that off the list, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and let's see, we have, I think, three more remaining. So we'll go and look at this one here in Maryville, Indiana. I'm just gonna kinda quickly go through these. So property, take a look at the property. Looks like it's been being worked on. Yeah, curb appeal, solid, solid looking, working class. I, I don't know what's going on here with the, with the ceiling. Hopefully there's, you know, um, I guess the, what comes to mind right now is, is it, is it experiencing any sort of roof issues? But yeah, from a curb, from a curb appeal perspective, it passes the, the sniff test. What I particularly like about this one is the market value is over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And the rent is 1100 a month, and that's corroborated by, actually, Rentometer has it around 1000 But nonetheless, a $1,000 rent for a property that's worth 136 mar market comparables are coming in at 128000 So which, again, these are all solid numbers. So um, I'm trying to think what else could be something that I, I wanted to look at as in demographics. Uh, again, at, per capita income, population seems to be steady. Employment seems to be on the rise. Household income is on the rise. So, so this is something that I would consider. And actually, what I'm, I might actually, I'll go back to the note. I'm going to give this a score of, say, 90. Okay. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then, as far as follow-up items, I, I think I would like to get some maybe boots on the ground maybe to to give me a better view of maybe roof condition just because i saw some things and maybe potential water stains up on the ceiling i just want to make sure that the the roof is in solid condition but otherwise the property has a lot of has a lot of the things that i'm that i like okay it's built in 1959 market value is solid rents are solid uh, monthly payment on this is is uh, 350 dollars is solid there's a good amount of payments remaining on this 223 so it passes a lot of the, the litmus test I mean the it looks like the borrower has been paying for more uh, almost 140 payments so these are all good things uh, and good indicators on the on on this particular note so let me go back here and see uh, the last couple remaining ones. Okay, this is uh, Wakpakona Wak Neda, Ohio. So, and again, it's, uh, I'm going to have to work on that. So we'll go to the property again. Curb appeal, nothing nothing, kind of, nothing strikes me as a uh, concern here. Market value is solid. You know, house built in 1887 is, is probably a, a, a little bit of a negative. The only other marketing, the only other uh, market value, I guess, sales comparable that I have is 80,000. Now this is also similarly uh, four bedroom, one bath. So rents are solid. So, and again, from an income perspective and from a sales uh, perspective, these are both coming in at around $80,000. There's no data from Rentometer on this particular property for rents. Look at the demographics. Population is flat to declining. Per capita income is on the rise. Employment is on the rise. Median household income is on the rise. So really the only thing that's, uh, I guess, a little bit of a drawback for me is the house is a little bit on the older side. 1887, I, I start worrying about foundation issues, 
think things of that nature. It's the the house is is 140 years, almost 140 years old, right? So so just just based on the year, I'm probably just going to drop that one. The other the other the other factors just weren't compelling enough for me to kind of keep it on the on the on the go list. So let's go back to the the dashboard here and let's look at this one in in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, now let's see the not the not the greatest of images that I have here. Looks like this photo was taken from a car. Looks like this might actually be the the rear the rear view mirror. Doesn't look too bad on the from a from a street view perspective. Property built in 1955. The market value is is in range. I, I like the market rent. So just kind of curious what the, so. 87,000. There's some properties here that are hovering in that in that range of 130, 100,000. Uh, so, so this one has some potential. Let's see what else. What else do I want to look at here? Oh, maybe maybe I can do a kind of a street view here. Let's see if I can take a quick look at this property. Is the property here? Not sure. This doesn't look like the right address. Yeah, so I, I might actually, again, this is probably like boots on the ground kind of thing. So maybe get a better feel for the neighborhood. You see, so I'll probably add a little action item for myself here to label as uh, uh, review neighborhood. So go ahead and create that and save, save. Okay. So let's see here. So go back to the dashboard. So uh, of the, I don't know, 50 or so notes that I reviewed, I've, I've kind of narrowed it down to about three notes that I'm going to have some follow-up items that I'd like to take before I buy, pull the trigger. If I had to, if I had to choose, I, now I know I added note score here, but I don't think I have it in this, my view here. So Let's see. Yeah. So I think the second one, I think I, I actually, no, I don't want to do that. The second one I actually marked as a, as a 90, I think may, mainly because of the market value. So if I had to choose of the ones of, of these here, uh, this Merrillville, Indiana one is probably one that I would seriously take a look at. I guess the only really concern that I have here is, is the roof condition. Don't want to get into a situation where I have to throw down a, a, a big amount of money, but if the market value supports it, why not? And obviously, the owner has been there for some time. So yeah, overall, this doesn't this doesn't look uh, too bad. So so in any case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the video off here. Just wanted to give you a taste of how I go about reviewing notes and reviewing tapes and and some of the things that I look for in in these in these notes and again everybody has different investment parameters and investment tolerances i just but but i i wanted to give you guys some exposure to to how i go about about evaluating notes and how i kind of narrow down kind of tapes into one or two notes that i want to follow up on and how i use the portal to do that so hopefully you found this helpful as i get new tapes i will go through the same process and and give you guys some more visibility as to how i evaluate notes using the portal hope you found this helpful happy investing